I'm, I'm going to be very brief in view of the time. I'm, I stand here as director of the Sanford Stem Cell Clinical Center. Just to remind you, in the past year, we've put four different clinical trial programs into uh, actual activity using stem cells for diabetes, heart failure, or as you'll hear, spinal cord injury, as well as a trial, uh, Cermtuzumab, that attacks so-called cancer stem cells in CLL. So we'll only hear about one of the active trials this morning, but we'll also uh, give you the pleasure of hearing about two clinical trial uh, candidates that we're uh, supporting that we hope will come into fruition in the coming year. One is an imaging trial that you'll hear about from Eric Ahrens in a few minutes to try to follow stem cells once they're transplanted. And then another from this Stephanie one. Turkey about a metabolic disease called cystinosis. So our first uh, speaker this morning. Hang on just a second. Keep talking. <laughs> I see that my script is going to be as long as the uh, just time a little, it takes Just a little song and dance. Yes, that's right. We will not sing. Um, and uh, what I've told the speakers is How's they that? have 20.00 minutes for uh, their talks. Uh, I'll stand up at about 19, and then we'll have five minutes after each talk designed for Q&A with the audience. And so I'm hoping that our first speaker, Joe Chiachi, our lead spinal, surgeon is ready to go, very distinguished faculty member in surgery at UCSD. Slides are up, and take it away, Joe. I thought you were going to say some nice things about my family and stuff, but that's all right. In any case, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you. It won't reach. You just carry it, okay? Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today. I stand here before you alone, but this is a massive, uh, massive team effort, uh, which emphasizes the beauty of the collaborative environment that we have here on the Mesa. Uh, it ranges from uh, Dr. Marsala in the lab at the Sanford to the uh, UCSD CIRM Alpha Stem Cell Clinic team, Dr. Jameson, the Sanford Stem Cell Clinical Center, Dr. Goldstein and Mr. Sanford, and of course, UCSD School of Medicine departments of neurosurgery and surgery. Uh, so we'll all agree that uh, spinal cord injury uh, that is complete is a devastating injury and it strikes people down in the uh, prime of their, uh, of their life and leaves them essentially with no hope of meaningful neurologic recovery. So uh, based on uh, lab studies and animal studies that we've done, we developed a clinical trial uh, transplanting neural derived, uh, fetal derived neural stem cells into chronic thoracic spinal cord injury. Our primary objective is to determine the safety and feasibility of this approach. Uh, and we're also observing very carefully to be sure that uh, uh, we check neurologic outcomes, function after implantation, check for adverse events. We're studying imaging uh, and uh, neurophysiology. To be included in the study, patients have had a uh, uh, complete Asia A thoracic spinal cord injury, uh, adults uh, between one and two years uh, post-injury. Uh, you're excluded if you have a penetrating injury, gunshot wound, stabbing, uh, if you have complete transection, uh, or any number of uh, complicating uh, medical conditions that would make it uh, dangerous for you to undergo this. Uh, we have uh, IRB and FDA approved uh, study for implantation of fetal derived neural stem cells in these chronic spinal cord injury patients. We had hundreds of national and international subjects uh, interested. We screened them all. So far, we've treated four subjects uh, with these complete injuries. Uh, we've, had, we've had no issues with that, and, uh, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, I'm very proud of the fact that we've had no perioperative or postoperative complications whatsoever. Uh, so I'm going to do a little like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory thing and take you to where we make the secret candy. So to do this study, we have to get the patient in the operating room. We're going to test the cells to make sure that uh, they're viable. We're going to dissect the spinal cord uh, down, and we've got to expose their injury, we've got to expose their previous instrumentation and reconstruction. And uh, once we do that, we're, we're, lo we're looking at this. Uh, there's, the, there's the spine and uh, the instrumentation here. We've got to remove all that, and then we've got to expose the, the spinal cord itself at the level of the injury. So at that point, we're going to bring in microscopic uh, dissection. That's our OR microscope. 
uh, and you know we're getting the benefit of the micro magnification and illumination. We're going to dissect through the scar tissue uh, and identify the level of the injury. We're going to identify the scar dura and uh, go through all that via micro dissection and identify uh, uh, the area of injury and the area for injection. This is a view of uh, you know how it's going under the microscope. Oops, no, it's not. Who's, who's messing with me up there? <laughs> Mom, are you here? Uh, so here, here's, a, here's, a, here's a view of what we're seeing under the microscope. Uh, we're opening the dura and the scar tissue, uh, and you can see the, the sort of shiny uh, ness of the arachnoid. And if you look through it, sort of through the water of the CSF, you can see a nice vessel there, and uh, you can see uh, the injured spinal cord, you're just going to have to take my word for it, that's a little bit, uh, you know, um, sort of injured. It just looks different. It's thinner. It's flatter. Um, while we're doing that, uh, Dr. Marsala is going to uh, load the cells into this special floating cannula and micro-injector. Um, so you can see how he's, like, really focused on, like, one drop there, because uh, it's so precious. Um, once we've got the cells loaded, and while the cells are loading, uh, we're still under the microscope, and we are sort of getting the frame. It's a stereotactic frame that allows for precise injection of the, uh, of the cells into the area. There you get a good view of the frame. See, i got to point at it like that, make sure it's okay. There's a nice still shot of the frame, and here we are putting the microcatheter and cannula in place uh, where we can control it precisely. Uh, and you can see that, uh, you know, we're uh, getting close to the time of implantation. And so for implantation, we're going to do, and, and we have done three injections on each side. So it's bilateral injections, three on each side, total of six injections. Uh, we're injecting a, a pretty, pretty high volume of cells in, in 10 microliters. And there you can see under the microscope the, uh, the fine needle and micro cannula going in and puncturing. No massive hemorrhage, uh, looks good, and uh, so that is sort of the, be the beginning of implantation. And then just to get a, a sort of a finer view of what the floating cannula looks like, if you look at this, this is going to take us just through the microscopic view where the, the needle goes in and uh, punctures through the parenchyma itself. And uh, once it's punctured, that metallic portion right here is pulled back to allow free-floating catheter during the injection, which takes a couple minutes to do so that the metal cannula isn't creating an injury of, it, of its own. See, that's the free-floating part of it right there. And when that's in, okay, great. When that's in place, then uh, the micro-injector is activated and uh, we're watching everything with the microscope. Oh, you guys aren't watching anything, are you? <laughs> All right. Well, believe me, it's really cool. <laughs> we can talk about that, too. All right. I'm going to show this if it's okay, because I think I still have time. Let me check my time. You're doing fine. Am I doing okay? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so here's the micro-injector. Uh, and so we're keeping a close eye on things. We want to make sure that the, the needle stays in the parenchyma and that the pulsations are, are not affecting the injection and that uh, uh, we're not creating any injury because there could be hemorrhage at any time. And here's the rest of the team sort of monitoring uh, that we're doing all that properly. Uh, once the patient gets the injection, they have to have a, a very watertight closure because uh, these are immunosuppressed patients, and, and these kinds of operations, even without immunosuppression and without the stem cells, are very risky. So we're going to follow them, and we have been following them at regular intervals. Uh, the first subject is uh, now 13 months out. Uh, the fourth subject out of four is now three months out. Uh, they all have detailed neurologic examinations, uh, laboratory studies. We're doing neurophysiology testing with EMG and nerve conduction studies and we're doing radiographic evaluations, uh, you know, just to make sure that everything's okay and also to see what we see. Uh, the first subject was a 26-year-old woman, a complete spinal cord injury at T7. She was uh, implanted 
September 2014. She's now 13 months post-procedure. Again, no significant adverse events uh, and stable neurologically. So no deterioration, no ascending level. Uh, this is just a, a post-implantation MRI. It doesn't really show any progress of the study, but what it does show is in this area of the injury and injection, there's no infection, there's no fluid collection, there's no, none of the badness that can happen when you operate on somebody like this, and, and that's really important to this phase one study. The second subject is a male patient, 33, T5, Asia A complete. He was implanted January 2015. Uh, he's nine months post-implant, uh, again, no significant adverse events, no change in neurologic status, no ascending level injury, similar post-op MRI level of injury without any uh, evidence of any uh, issues that we have created, any additional injury or fluid or anything like that, any infection, uh, and we follow that all the way along. Subject three, 35-year-old uh, male, uh, T2, Asia A, spinal cord injury, uh, motor vehicle accident, uh, implanted for 2015, Five months post-op, again, no serious adverse events, no uh, deterioration neurologically, no post-op complications, no infection. Uh, you know, I would say it's a pretty clean MRI despite the injury that's there, and we're gonna follow that and see what happens. And, uh, and our fourth subject, uh, we've treated four so far. He's a 25-year-old male, T5 AJ complete. He was implanted July of this year, he's three months uh, post-op, again, at, up till now, no significant events. He's been on immunosuppression, as have all patients, for the three months, uh, and, uh, and has no, no issues. Post-op uh, MRI just showing the area of the injury again without any of those uh, bad things that we see in some of our, I don't want to say routine, but regular post-op patients who haven't had immunosuppression and haven't had uh, a stem cell injection. So this is my favorite slide because there's nothing there. This is... Adverse events, these are really the adverse events. One patient, uh, patient number one, had nausea and acne. I, I, you know, I can't explain that, but it went away. Uh, she, she grew out of it, that's what my mom used to say. Uh, patient number two had abdominal distress, probably, I don't know, stress-related, you know, I mean, it's distress, right? There's the word stress in there, uh, but that went away as well. Patient three also had acne, so I don't know if it's because of the residents have acne or they're like touching them. I, I have to see about that. Uh, and patient number four, it's three months, uh, but has had no adverse events, no acne, no anything. And, and you say, well, big deal, it's three months. But you know, post-op from an operation like this, uh, you're going to get your bad infection before three months goes by. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting this, but it's really important. It's big, you know. No significant adverse events, and all events, all events in all the subjects have resolved. Uh, you know, no complications that you, that you see often enough with these revision spinal surgeries. No wound infections, no dehiscence, no cerebrospinal fluid leaks, no neurologic deterioration, and all this despite the immunosuppression, despite the increased operative time, to uh, implant the cells and, and, and add all those other measures that you saw in the videos. Or maybe you didn't see them, I wasn't looking. Uh, so what, what have we established so far? And I, and I emphasize this because this is really big. We have established that it is feasible. You can implant these stem cells in spinal cord injury patients. It's, it's totally feasible, the concept is sound. And when you do it, it's, it's safe and it's been safe now over uh, at least 13 months for one patient, and, and we're gonna keep following it. So we're gonna try to keep going. Uh, where are we going? Well, we're collecting the neurophysiology data, the EMG, the nerve conduction studies, and we're analyzing that data, and we're, we're, we're tabulating Asia examinations as we go along. And we're also trying to blaze another trail by studying these patients uh, with a novel sort of type of modality of diffusion imaging of the spinal cord. Uh, and, and, you know, I don't, I need help with this, so if anybody out there knows a lot about this stuff, please contact me or put me in touch with someone who does. Because when you look at a sort of a diffusion imaging of the spine, this is patient one, it's really hard to interpret, right? I mean, it's kind of not very elegant, but here's the level of the spinal cord injury. So you see there's something wrong there. So we've, we've tried to tweak this and, and try some new ways of 
you know, analyzing the data so that we can use this to follow the graft as, as the patients go along. So here's, here's, here's the spinal column. You can maybe, if you wink or something, see a disc here and a disc here. And so this is a spinal cord injury patient, so it's kind of an irregular cord, whereas this is a normal control, and this is kind of a normal filled-in spinal cord. So you sort of see the color coding and the shape of the sausage that you would expect here as opposed to this shape. So just doing that for us is, is, is a really big deal because I don't know, you know that that's been done. So we're going we're gonna to do that maybe even uh, in, in some other normals and, and try to sort of set a pattern so that we can study what's happening to those cells. So just to go through sort of the process, so, so we take these uh, MRIs that we acquire and then we put them through this like machine and, and, and computer stuff and then we analyze it and we're trying to get nice color-coded ways of, of seeing the difference. And so you can see the, the area of the spinal cord injury is this color and the colors healthy above and below, spinal cord injury, spinal column. And so it's too early, I can't, I can't interpret this, but I will be able to, I hope by next time we talk about it. Uh, and I'm really working hard on that and I think that's gonna really help us a lot. Again, just subject four, because this one's really easy to interpret, because you know you get better as you go along, there's a learning curve. I mean, my fourth marriage was way better than my first. No, I'm only kidding. I only, I only had one. <laughs> uh, so, you know, here, here's, here's the color of normal cord, normal cord, normal cord, and you see these other areas where there's gaps, right? And those gaps, uh, boy, I'd really like to fill those in, you know, I'd really like to fill those in. And so we're really working on that. And uh, because it's minute 15 and I don't want to get yelled at, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to thank a lot of people with my last bit of time. I'm going to try to cram all the people that have worked really hard into the phone box of like one slide. So you've got uh, UCSD Serum Alpha Stem Cell Clinic and, you know, Dr. Jameson, Betty, Teresa, Tiffany, Jennifer, Karina. That's a big team, but they're really worth it and they really help. We've got the Sanford Stem Cell Clinical Center, Dr. Goldstein, Mr. Sanford. We've got Dr. Marsala and his entire lab team, which is like a whole presentation in and of itself, but their work is well recognized and, and they deserve congratulations. We have Dr. Joe from uh, NeuralSTEM. Uh, we've got uh, UCSD Department of Neurosurgery. Dr. Carter uh, is the Chairman of the Department of Surgery. Dr. Clary, the Chairman uh, Neurosciences at UCSD. Dr. Mobley, and of course, UCSD School of Medicine and, uh, and Dean Brenner. So, uh, I'm good, Larry. You can, uh, you can have the floor if you wish. Thank you. Okay. We have, we have plenty of time for questions. Okay. So, you sure, yeah. Like Great. So we have time for a few questions. We'll start in the back and work our way forward. Can you get a mic up there? This person is standing up. Go ahead. the injection of the stem cell. Yeah, no, I think I understood. So I'm going to repeat the question. I think the question is, if it's a chronic injury, will there be atrophy of the muscles if it's too long, and, and what was the time frame? So we were doing patients between one and two years out. And, and you know, there, there is some atrophy, but, uh, uh, but I think it's not going to prevent uh, the muscles if they're re-innervated from, from uh, doing something. That's what we're hoping. Hi, I'm curious as to how you... Where are you? I'm right okay, here. There you are. Hi. Um, I'm curious as to how you chose the number and distribution of neural stem cells to inject. So the, the number of injections was based on the animal work, which I didn't talk about. Is it based on lesion volume? Just right. So, so we wanted to be safe. So we chose the site based on the injury. So it's the injury site that gets the injection. The number of injections and the number of cells is just based on the animal work that was done starting at that, at that dose. Hi, uh, it's very nice to know there is no otherwise uh, surgerized effect after you transplant those uh, uh, stem cells. Um, have you seen any functional improvement for spinal cord injury with, low, with having to have a uh, nerve repair? Um, the adult stem cell actually, uh, and the ability to generate nerve, uh, neuron is very limited. The last study has been done, they basically, uh, even in mice, they 
it's very hard for them to, uh, to generate any neurons here. So uh, do you have any like, intention to try uh, different stem cells, like uh, embryonic stem cell? Uh, some stem cell can uh, have a better ability to generate uh, neurons. So, so I'm, I'm going to try to date. Oh, I didn't know you weren't done. I'm sorry. I stopped paying attention a few minutes ago. Uh, the, uh, I, think, I think what you're asking is what kind of stem cells are they? They're fetal derived neural stem cells. So, so yes, I, I have interest in lots of different things, and so I'm open. I'm open to I'm open to considering other other uh, options. Yes. So, if you were to take fetal neural stem cells from a mouse and basically take those cells from the same mouse with the spinal, and then go into a spinal cord injury, and now put the mouse on either immunosuppressive drugs or not so that their patient ma matched for the mouse and in this case shouldn't harm the mouse. I'm just wondering whether they do better or whether they do worse because obviously I'm sure you're thinking about the fact that, that it's possible to correct and tailor make the cells that you've got to whatever patients you're injecting with so they wouldn't have to have immunosuppressive drugs. Would that be would that accelerate the possibility of spinal cord repair? Yeah, that's brilliant, and I, 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 I've been thinking about that a lot, and so we're trying to figure out how to do that and, and to do it in a way that then we can, we can do that in, in human subjects. That would, I think it would be really, really good. Um, if you get some form of functional recovery uh, in the patients in your study and future studies, and one hopes you do, um, what are your views on the long-term um, potential of, of using fetal-derived material um, f for a product? Well, I think uh, the long-term potential is vast, uh, especially if we, if we demonstrate improvement. I think uh, that's the key, and, and so I'm, I'm, I'm looking, looking to that. Uh, and I think that the potential will be great. Yes. Hey, One. Thank you very much. That was, uh, that was a very nice talk. Can Thank you. you give an indication of how immunogenic are the, uh, the fetal-derived cells in terms of what type or levels of immunosuppression do you typically use, and how can you monitor for rejection of the uh, transplanted cells? Yeah, brilliant. I mean, so we're, we're trying to figure that out because uh, we, we, don't, we don't know for sure, and, and that's why it's, it's a bit risky because uh, obviously too much, not good complications, and, and maybe, maybe we've already done too much despite the fact that we haven't had complications. So we're, we're working on that, and that, that is a very important thing to, for us to figure out, and that's part of the process. So Larry, can you take over? Okay, great. All right, thanks. Thank